so the literature that was um, produced up till or before the victorian age that was that those were the books that these people or the people of the victorian age were reading they were reading shakespeare they were reading alexander pope they were reading john dun they were reading keats they were reading ben jonson they were reading marlow they were reading francis bacon they were reading works produced by all of these writers before the victorian age however during the victorian age before they could be read they were changed they were censored they were cleansed of any naughtiness that would be in there ne eder sahitter moddhe toro pope er sahitya rape of the lock alexander pope's uh, name of alexander pope's work play rape of the lock shakespeare is right has had written uh, hamlet shakespeare had written the uh, love's labor's lost the midsummer night a midsummer night's dream so all of these things all of these plays they had a little bit of elements which queen victoria thought were not suitable for her subjects so all of these plays they were changed and they were cleansed they were cleaned of any naughtiness or any dirty episodes that queen victoria considered dirty now like you can imagine how much shakespeare how dirty shakespeare's works can be for aajker ekta hollywood er movie berocche ba dhoro ekta erotica novel berocche shetar comparison e shakespeare er natok to kichui chilo shakespeare er natok was very you know is very innocent for us but for queen victoria maybe they were not so much innocent and they were changed and cleaned of any dirtiness that with queen victoria did not approve of. so what was, why why did i mention these specifically these points which you can see in in your screen during the age of people are still joining now okay during uh, uh, the queen during the age of queen victoria slavery was wanted to be abolished there was an anti slavery movement that were that were that was carried out in 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 the victorian age and it took years to achieve this ban or this prohibition of slavery slavery mane tumra jano slavery mane কে বলতে পারবে স্লেভারি মানে কি দাসত্বিশনিশনিশনিশনিশনিশনিশনিশনিশনিশনিশনিশনিশনিশনিশনিশনিশনিশনিশনিশনিশনিশনিশনিশনিশনিশনিশনিশনিশনিশনিশনি
also during queen victoria's age that slavery was abolished or banned or stopped completely queen victoria's age was also known for uh for you know, increasing population in in the europe in europe as a result there was a more there was the market for feeding the meat market it also grew and as a result queen cruelty to animals also grew there was an act that came out in 1813 that prevented cruel cruel treatment to animal uh, and uh, between 1780 and 1850 the english they stopped they they were actually before that that is before the 1780s they were one of the english were one of the most aggressive brutal and cruel nations in the world they were they were blood thirsty and they loved meat and they would kill animals disproportionately like more than what was required so and and it became slowly uh, they are from the 1780s to 1850s it became slowly polite it became orderly it became tender minded that is these cruelty acts were passed that is prevention of cruelty these acts were passed and slowly from slaughtering of animals etc uh suppressed there were many cruel sports cruel animal sports and games that used to go on at that point of time like bull baiting bull baiting was before during shakespeare's age there was a thing called bear baiting mane there was a bear bhalluk it was tied to a pole okay and uh, a human being was uh, let loose in front of him and they were supposed to fight similar games were also carried out with bulls there were cock fights hen fights dogs were used to pull carts and cars they were diseased okay and they were like very poor self very poor men used to use dogs to pull their cart or use dogs to deliver milk human foods and also animal foods they used to deliver animal foods as well and the poverty of the people that is the people being poor it aggravated or it increased this cruelty to animals however it also stopped during queen victoria's age then there was this there was this uh, facet or feature of child labor that there was child labor in continuation during queen victoria's time and there was they were very angry like people or, or religious people during uh, of that age religious people during the victorian age they were very angry when they saw that the conditions of the poor children and middle class like the, of the poor children like the real real time poor, poor children that is those whom the religious people actually saw in front of them their condition and the condition and what uh, and what british the uh, britain thought or uh, or what england thought or what queen victoria's morality of childhood thought they were very much different queen victoria's morality about children and the actual condition of the children they were very very different from each other and the middle class notion there was a notion of children being innocent the children represent innocence because they are yet to be tainted or they are yet to be corrupted by this world so children are the most innocent of the creatures in this world so middle class the middle class people they thought so however the real condition of children or poor children was very different they were on the road they were beggars they were begging so this difference made the religious people of the victorian age 
fight for legal protection of children they were you they used to work in factories they used to work hours after hours in factories children and then acts were passed later on various laws were passed that prohibited that stopped children from 9 to 13 years to work and only adult men uh worked in the factories then there are the there, there is the condition of sexuality verbal feelings sexual feelings were completely prohibited in the victorian age like you are not supposed to have any sexual sexual feeling about any other person uh you see it was very confusing during the time of queen victoria people used to go for bath in the sea or at the beach and they would use a, a bathing machine a machine for bathing themselves what was this this bathing machine was a device it uh, it was actually a kind of plastic er kono partition er moton hoto jeta tumi nijer chare dike dar koriye dile ki you will be able to change clothes so people used to go to for a bath in the sea or the beach and they would use the bathing machine however it was still possible to see people naked Like the bathing machine did not completely hide you, and Meghan, को तुम्हें जीगेश करो चो first queen, Queen Elizabeth नहीं कि Queen Victoria first queen. The first queen was I think it was Elizabeth the first. तारो आगे there was uh, Mary, Queen of Scots, who ruled for uh, a week or ten days during in England. So Elizabeth the first, she was the first queen who reigned or who ruled for a long period of time in England. So she was there during the Elizabethan age. After that came, uh, the, the, then after Queen Victoria there was uh, Charles, King Charles who ruled. Then there then came Queen Victoria. Slowly there there were two or there were one or more, one or two rulers in between them also. So yes, the first queen was technically Queen Mary of Scots, who ruled for nine days, and permanently there was Elizabeth the first, who was the first queen of monarchical England. So yes, what I was saying. So even though the bathing machine were used, it was still possible to see people naked. And uh, typical middle class brides, like people, uh, women about to marry, they knew nothing about sex. and they learned about it only at wedding night and this was a often traumatic experience since you nobody teaches you what this is since nobody accompanies you or since nobody likes to tell you what is it about if you are about to face it with a new person because there was no concept of love at that point of time it was just arranged marriage of course there was love there were novels that were coming out at that point of time during this time that was speaking about love but uh, arranged marriage was the usual way so in arranged marriages like you do not get to see your husband until the wedding day so it is a complete stranger whom whom you are having sexual relations with so this was often traumatic this was often hurtful this this was often very depressing for these uh, new new brides and victorian uh sorry so and verbal and written communication of sexual feelings was prohibited you cannot you could not express that you have sexual feelings from for anybody in that sense this victorian morality still exists today uh there was a language of flowers like you would send flowers to someone if you have such feelings etc etc however there were also novels being produced at that point of time specifically sexual novels that are called erotica they are known as erotica that is they are novels about and of sex so you see whatever during any which age be it victorian age be it elizabethan age be it the 20th century india be it the 21st century india always know one thing that whenever there is something 
it can be an idea it can be a work whatever it is whenever there is something that is prohibited whenever there is something that is made uh, illegal uh, which is not practiced or which is it is not seen with good eyes by the people it is always that thing that people want to engage in the most like during the 1900s 1900s in india uh, during indira gandhi's rule there was prohibition act that is liquor or alcohol was prohibited in india but the largest amount of alcohol black was black marketed was during that age the black markets of alcohol it became a million dollar industry so that is always there so since sex was prohibited or treated as something that is shameful during the victorian age it was also during this age that eroticas were produced there were magazines about sex and there were books and novels about sex victorian erotica is also survives in private letters that scholars have revived so uh, it was this and then related to sexuality was homosexuality which was of course banned it was banned in the victorian age like homosexuality does not exist now can you imagine the problem uh, with this thing is that if it does not exist like the queen is saying it does not exist but it, it exists by natural by god's nature if god has made you like that or if your sexual orientation is like that that you you like a boy rather than a girl it is not something that anyone else can stop you from feeling because this is not you don't have a switch in your mind which you can switch off and on and then change your uh, liking towards a girl it cannot happen like that but it was banned so anyone who practiced this or anyone who was thought to be a homosexual was criminalized it was illegal you were imprisoned etc etc now there was a huge problem of prostitution during the victorian age prostitution as a and as, as an occupation was flourishing since i told you that england at that point of time was very poor the class differences that is the rich were very rich and the poor were very very poor so as a result people took to various jobs such as for women it was prostitution it was also during this age that uh, you know about the story of jack the ripper jack the ripper er golpo kyo jane who is jack the ripper Jack the Ripper was a Ripper was a murderer of that point of time. He was a, he was a murder. He was a man, Jack called Jack, and he used to rip open women who were usually prostitutes. Rip open मैंने छीड़े फैला मैंने थोड़ा छुड़ी दिए छीड़े फैल के. So he was called Jack the Ripper, who was also a criminal the, during the uh, like there are myths and tales and so many stories about him. There are so many films about him. Uh, so he was also this was also taking place uh, during queen victoria's age so prostitution was widespread it was a big problem for the authorities like whether they should legalize prostitution or whether they should, they should criminalize prostitution but they could actually do nothing with it because this profession is so just give me one moment shuja to shuj baroi ekkhuni kara dujon join korle कारा जयन कर Okay, let's continue. So yes, so there was an uprise, there was a rise in prostitution, there was a rise in crime, etc., etc. All during 
the age of queen victoria so one thing that is very clear in this with, with, when you read about victorian morality is that even though victorian morality or queen victoria concentrated so much on ethics or cleanliness it was during her age that prostitu that uh, like uh, professions like prostitution uh, social conditions like crime homosexuality all of these things were on the rise during her age and the first and foremost thing that should come to the mind is that the condition of women uh women were not considered to be individual independent thinkers at that point of time so it was during this age that elizabeth brett browning was writing writing her sonnets from the portuguese so this is the name of the collection which was written in 18 uh, published in 1850 and it contained the poem how do i love thee i will take a minute just one minute of break please give me a minute yes um sorry so uh, in 1850 she published her collection of sonnets which was called the sonnets from the portuguese in which how do i love thee was the last last sonnet it was the last sonnet that was in this book in this collection of sonnets okay so uh let us discuss these particular points all right so elizabeth barrett browning wrote this wildly pop this was very very popular this was very popular this collection of sonnets uh, by eb browning it was very famous and it was very popular It, it was widespread. People loved the, the her sonnets for various reasons, which we will study together. So uh, she wrote this wildly popular sonnet sequence, which is most famous. This anthology, this sonnets from the Portuguese, this collection is most famous for this particular sonnet of "How do I love thee?" That is the last, uh, last. Sorry, second last. It is the second last sonnet. That is penultimate. They are calling it. It is sonnet number. Forty-three, it is, mm, which is most famous for this sonnet particularly. And it was also written during Robert Downing. Robert Downing is another famous, very popular Victorian poet. Have you heard his name, anyone? Robert Downing and name kyo shune chho? Ba pore chho tar? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Robert Downing. Uh, My last Duchess or or Kobita. Taru ko. सुंदर कविता लेखा रबार्ट डाउनिंग रबार्ट डाउनिंग कविता पढ़ते खूब भलो लगे इज भेरि फानी इज भेरि विटी एंड आईरनिकल एंड इज भेरि क्लेवर इज अ भेरि क्लेवर पोएट अल्सो सो दैट्स वाई वी लाभ हिज पोएम्स एंड 
Robert Dowding was ba Elizabeth Barrett Browning's husband. However, it was not a very easy love. They had to run away together and then marry each other because Robert was a poet. He was an artist. So artists were not paid that much. If you are an artist and if you want to make a profession out of painting or writing, the initial years will, of course, go in poverty because it is not very easy to make your art uh, a profession. It is not very easy in that field. So Robert was still struggling when they fell in love. And Elizabeth belonged to a well-to-do. Uh, she was well-off. She was. She belonged to a well-off family, uh, ruled by her her family, which uh, was headed by his her father. Her father was a strong believer in this Victorian morality. So you can understand when they fled out, when they ran away to marry with each other. Uh, what are the conditions that Elizabeth had to face? So these sonnets. They were written during the during Robert Browning's courtship of her. That is when Robert was courting her, or you know, they were they were just in a, they were they have their, their relationship had just started off the initial days of a relationship. That is the courting days. So it was written during that time, and. Um, this title that is Sonnets from the Portuguese, this title has a very interesting story. This title is often mistaken. Like it looks like that Sonnets from the Portuguese, if you do not know about, if you do not know about this, these sonnets beforehand, from before, you will feel that doesn't the title feel like that, that they are translation of Portuguese poems? Like if I am writing sonnets from Italy, I it is very clearly understood that these sonnets are translations of Italian sonnets. So why did Barrett Browning or Elizabeth name her collection of books like this? The title, which is often mistaken as suggesting that poems are translations of some of the Portuguese collection of sonnets, like people were writing at that point of time. Although this is intentionally made like this, Elizabeth named her collection of sonnet deliberately misleading, like they, she made it like that on her own, knowingly, consciously. You see, who was this uh, sonnets from the Portuguese? It has, even though it is misleading, or even though the title is not what it seems, they are not translations. They have an, they have some truth in it. Elizabeth had written a poem. In 1844, that is before the these collections, this collection was published. She had written a poem in 1844 called Katerina to Camions. This was a poem about yes. Uh, in which this in this poem, Katerina to Camions, it was a fictional poem, of course, but it was based on real life characters, that is Cat Cat Catarina de Atheid and a Portuguese poet called Luis Vaz de Canyons. And Luis Vaz has, had written love poems for Catarina as well. And Catarina was also about to die out of a disease, very much like Elizabeth Browning, who was handicapped. Elizabeth was handicapped. She was an invalid for life. She could not walk. She was always on a chair and a wheelchair. And Robert was her husband. So in that condition, she had written this poem called Katharina, uh, Katharina to Camions, which was based so much, which is so much like her own life. And in this collection, therefore, she was Katharina. She stood for Katharina. And of course, Robert stood for Louis Vaz, her poet lover or her husband in this case. So this misleading title or this hidden meaning of the title helps us to maintain some deniability, like it makes, it allows us to deny that these poems are actually autobiographical. Why do you think so? This is my question to you all. 
এলিজাবেথ কে এটা লুকিয়ে বোঝাতে হয়েছিল দ্যাট শি হ্যাড টু রাইট অ্যাবাউট হার লাভ ফর রবার্ট ইন আ হিডেন ফর্ম হোয়াই ডু থিং সো ইটস ভেরি ইজি আই জাস্ট টোল্ড কেউ বলো হু ওয়ান্টস টু সে আনাম সেই সময় নিজেদের কোনো ফিলিংস না আমি গান কো না তুমি না অন্য কেউ বলো তুমি না অন্য কেউ বলো কেন মনে হয় যে ভিক্টোরিয়ান এজে এলিজাবেথ কে নিজের প্রেমের কবিতা রবার্ট এজ নিজের নিজের বর যে ছিল তার জন্য যে ভালোবাসাটা সেটাও লুকিয়ে বলতে হয়েছিল আন্ডার দি গাইজ অফ রিয়েল লাইফ ক্যারেক্টারস বলো কেউ ম্যাম সেই টাইমে মানে এটা अलाउड ছিল না ফিলিংটা শেয়ার করা মানে বলা এটাই মানে ডিয়ার টু দি বিকি বললাম হোয়াট ইজ দ্য টার্ম দ্যাট ইউ ইউজ ফর দিস দিস ওয়াজ দিস ওয়াজ বিকজ অফ দি ভিক্টোরিয়ান morality of that age that it was prohibited you are not allowed to express your love express your love mane tumi mone rakhte paro but it is expression is prohibited this was the hypocrisy of the victorian age in the victorian age people concentrated very much on their behavior on their manners on their external appearance on their dresses on on the food that they ate but it was also during the victorian age that it was there was animal cruelty there was prostitution okay uh, expression of feelings was prohibited so and and on top of that elizabeth being a woman was writing or publishing a collection of sonnets that was a very big deal at that point of time it was a huge deal at that point of time uh, people always think that it is because of robert browning that she is famous but that is not the case she became famous on her own terms because of her own ability and capabilities and her talent as a poet as a sonneteer so during that age she had to adopt this hidden name uh, that suggested that there are translations from portuguese poems for portuguese sonnets but they are actually very much autobiographical in nature and this hiding it was necessary because of the sentiment or because of the prevailing notions of a victorian age this is clear does anyone have any problem in understanding like the hidden meaning of the title if if you have, if you have any problem if anyone has a problem please ask now okay so the sonnets they were very special in this collection they were very striking as a kind uh, they were a kind of an art poetic autobiography of elizabeth's feeling for robert because she had been an invalid for years she had been a handicapped woman for years and she did not expect to find such passionate love at all she did not expect to find love at all but still she did and technically speaking on the technical aspects of the sonnet that is you know a poem is written it has some technical aspects a poem has rhythm a poem is written in meters there are several ways of writing a poem and you cannot just write lines and they can be a poem erokom hote pare na jerokom film making has its own rules uh, has its own set of techniques song writing has its own rules and own set of techniques so does writing sonnets there are so many various uh, ways of writing sonnets based on those people who did write sonnets like it began uh, history of sonnets it began with actually it began with a spanish tradition called italian tradition uh, from torcado tasso tasso t a w s o was the first sonneteer in history but not of english literature in english uh, in it, it then in the 14th century there was a man called petrarch in italy and in english it was during the 16th century that is 1500s the year of 1500s two people called sir thomas wyatt thomas wyatt thomas spelling you know wyatt is w y a t sir thomas wyatt and sir philip sidney sir philip sidney these two people were writing were the leading sonneteers of the, of the english and later on william shakespeare would also write sonnets so in in those in the in these on all of these sonnets it is technical uh, it is usually uh, one lover who complains that the beloved that the other person does not love her back like if you are a sonnet of the 14th century like the italian petrarch or of the 16th century like english thomas wyatt and sir philip sidney you would be writing about your love for a woman 
women because there are men there will always be men who will write sonnets so because you you are writing so about your love for a woman who does not return your love back so these sonnets they were always they always had this theme there was nothing different in these sonnets shakespeare sonnets they were a bit different so that is why shakespeare is so great that is why we consider shakespeare the master artist he was different in his technique of sonnets as well so this unrequited love or unreturned love this often this was often hidden in terms of an astonishment like people they like the poets or the sonneteers they were surprised because if i love you so much then why don't you love me back this was the general idea of petrarchan sonnets and wyatt's sonnets etc but sonnets from the portuguese it is a, it has an opposite attitude it has it is opposite in attitude because elizabeth is surprised that someone like browning or robert browning actually does love her she is surprised because she has been an invalid so you can understand in even today's modern world falling in love with a handicapped woman or a handicapped man for the matter uh, it's it's unusual how many of you know how many people do you know who has fallen in love with a person who is permanently disabled ami kauke chini na orokom byaktigoto bhabe i do not know anyone any such person personally but at that time during the age of victoria when the society was so hypocritical like du rokom chilo na mane dhoro bolto ek rokom ar kaaje korto ek rokom setai to chilo ar to kichu na so how does elizabeth is surprised that how does a man like robert browning fall in love with her so these sonnets they tell of the surprise um that they that they had okay uh, just i'll take one moment tomader ki er pore ar kono class ache er pore 10 ta theke na ma'am theek ache so i'll take 10 minutes okay because i started late so 10 minutes i'll take mm. yes so these sonnets they also apart from the surprise they also tell of the domestic happiness Okay, they also tell of the domestic happiness that they they were they were happily married. Robert Browning and Elizabeth Browning they were happily married, and they also these sonnets also express that happiness that they had in their married life. You see, Elizabeth for Elizabeth it was a bit difficult to run away with Robert because she was actually happy at at her home, uh, living with her parents. she was very happy at her home and she writes of this happiness in one of the one of the sonnets in this collection as well and she had to leave that happy home for robert which was also very difficult for us and uh, elizabeth's mother died when elizabeth was 22 and uh, it was as early as 14 like when she was 14 years old she was struck by an illness that would make her an invalid forever even before robert met her but they did meet and they struck a particularly unique relationship and this unique relationship they are best portrayed in two of her sonnets in two of her sonnets uh, that is also a part of this collection let us see what they are first is uh, they are sonnets 33 and 34 i would uh, want you to read what what is there on your screen and i'll just narrate from behind so in sonnet 33 robert calls her by the same pet name that she used to run at or that that she used to have when she was a child and uh elizabeth would take joy or be happy in the company of whatever a person called her lovingly primarily her mother and since those people who used to love her before robert that is now they are now that they are dead 
like her mother is dead she is already dead before she meets robert she has she tries to ima uh, elizabeth imagines to bring back or recreate this way of feeling love that she had lost in her early childhood and if he calls her by the same name she will answer with the same heart as you can see in the poem it's written like if you are calling elizabeth if robert is calling elizabeth with the same name that her mother used to call her with she will also return the same feeling of love that she used to return her mother with and now when she is called by him now when she is called by robert she thinks about death which is following her she is thinking about the death which follows which has followed all her beloved people who have died whenever robert calls her by her loving name she feels struck by death which is following her or the death that struck down all her family members but the result of this was that he is not like all those people who had already loved elizabeth robert was not uh not one loved thing among others but she was everything to her all those people who were already there in elizabeth's life before robert they also used to love her true but robert's love for elizabeth was different because robert was everything for elizabeth elizabeth loved robert with not a single good but all her good as you can see it is written in her poem a single good but all my good her love for him is the concentration and is the fulfillment or the complete completion of the love that she felt for everyone before him elizabeth tar nijer poribarer lokderke ma ke baba ke bonderke joto ta bhalobashto shei shobkota bhalobasha shei pori puro ta puro quantity bolo degree bolo quality bolo puro tai ekta jaygay eshe concentrate hoye jay kar opor robert er opor now that is the kind of love that elizabeth felt for robert and it is this these feelings that culminate that finally flower in the sonnet that we have in our syllabus that is how do i love thee she explains that i have so much title ta shunege eta bojha jacche that i have love i have so much love for you inside of me i do not know the ways in which i will show them to you because they are innumerable ways and i cannot count the ways in which i can show my love to you so that it matches the intensity of my love for you this is what this is what elizabeth tries to say in in sonnet number 43 that we will read together but in our next class so in our next class we will begin with a short biographical study of elizabeth barrett browning herself that is we will read about the poet before the poem and then we will start off with the poem that we have in hand just a minute um okay so i will stop the share screen sharing just one minute uh, yes so uh, does anyone have any question to ask me right now is the time any queries any question any problem that you might have please ask me now ma'am hmm apni je first sonnet year star naam bollen ota bhule geche ma'am acha first sonnet year hmm i'm sorry the first sonnet year is a man called torcado taso i will tell you the spelling just give me a moment chat box se naam ta 
Yes. And after that, we have uh, and with him, sorry, with him, we have Petrarch. Then we have Sir Thomas Wyatt. Yeah. And <laughs> Sir Thomas Wyatt. Hey. Hey, कथबार्ता then we have sir philip sidney these are the sonnet years and then later on we will also have sir william uh, sorry not sir william shakespeare ma'am name gulo por por bolchen por por mane your age wise bolcho ki tumi ha शेक्सपियर हलो तुम एलिजाथन एज मान से फर्म any form of respect to an elder person to a man of profession amra ki tader ke sir bole thaki but before uh, in in england or in in, uh, in britain uh, if you call it like that uh, during during monarchy when kings and queens were ruling sir was a name that was only given to knights knights that are the soldiers highest rank soldiers of the king or the queen they were knights and they only they were called sir because you had to the queen or the king they had to uh, have a ceremony with these knights called knighthood okay they you would be giving given knighthood and then you would be called sir jerokom ajker dine o amader calcutta university uh, professor ekjon ache jake italy theke knighthood dawa hoyeche thik ache do you know his name that i am tomake bolchi the na uh, the name yes um professor ramchandra guho naam shuna chho kyo sorry eh, chinmay guho naam shuna chho kyo cg chinmay guho bole ekjon professor ache calcutta university te jake knighthood dawa hoyeche twice so even though we call him sir out of out of respect for his profession and since he is a elder he is also technically a sir because he has been given knighthood to so, sir kotha ta esche erokom bhabe चौसर टाइम थे के माने थोड़ा थर्टीन हंड्रेड्स बट ट्वेल्व हंड्रेड्स है दे वर गिवन नाइटहुड दे वर नाइट्स द हाईएस्ट रैंक सोल्जर ऑफ द किंग और द क्वीन एंड दे वर कॉल्ड सर सो यू नो फिलियम शेक्सपियर ही वाज नॉट अ नाइट सो यू नो हमने सर तो लिख ही नहीं बट रेस्ट ऑफ दीस पीपल सर थॉमस वायर्ड सर फिलिप सिडनी दे रिसीव्ड नाइटहुड एंड दैट इज व्हाई वी राइट सर इन देयर नेम्स आल्सो 
ঠিক আছে আর কোন প্রশ্ন আছে আর কারুর কোন রকমের প্রশ্ন ঠিক আছে তো তোমরা প্লিজ টেক আ স্ক্রিনশট অফ দা পিপল স্লাইড নিতে পারবে কেউ লম্বা করে একটা স্ক্রিনশট অ্যাটেন্ডেন্সের জন্য খালি নিজেদের নামেরটা নেবে না এই যে পিপল বলে যেটা লেখা আছে ওইখানে ওদের পুরোটা একটা স্ক্রিনশট নিয়ে নাও নিতে পারবে কে নিচ্ছ আমাকে বলো সবার নাম যেন আসে ওরকম ভাবেই পাঠাবে ঠিক আছে ওকে তো তাহলে আমি কি বন্ধ করবো ডু এনি নোবাডি হ্যাজ এনি কোয়েশন টু আসিউ ইন দ্য নেক্সট ক্লাস দেন